We are back. Finally, we're here on Colorado Buffalo's Midweek Live, giving you some updates. It's Big Dog Chico and Brian Howell right here on the Bleacher Report Network. Uh, Brian, let's talk about some uh, – it's, it's going down. Get ready to go down to Rocky Mountain Showdown at Colorado State up in Fort Collins. Uh, tell us about uh, the week and what's going on so far, and uh, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, another rivalry game and, uh, you know, another rivalry game on the road. You know, last year the Buffs got both of these teams um, at home. You'd almost uh, like it to split up where, you know, last year was one on the road, one at home, and this year's one on the road, one at home. So uh, right. it was nice to have them both at home last year. It's kind of tough to have them both on the road this year. But uh, certainly Fort Collins is not going to be the environment that Lincoln was. Uh, so, but I'm curious to see what it looks like there, but, uh, the bus has got to be locked in. We know that out in stinking Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, tough <laughs> loss, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, defense played well. And that's what we've been trying to, it seemed like coach Hart and coach prime has been trying to build off of to trying to, you know, mold the team to say that, Hey, we've been the second half defensive team so far holding, uh, the, the first game, North Dakota state holding them to six points in the second half. And then Nebraska to zero. If they can come out and start fast, like Coach Hart and the Hill Green uh, said today in their conference, uh, it could be a different type of ball game. Uh, we've been looking at, you know, the previews and what Colorado State did in their previous games and basically their matchups. I don't see anybody on their roster like uh, the defensive end last year that did, delivered all right. those hits. <laughs> uh, still got the two safeties back there. Offensive line is not really as scary this year. How do you look about uh, – how does the matchup look uh, on paper to you? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's a more favorable favorable matchup than last week was. And, um, you know, Kamara was the guy that got after Shadour. Kamara. Yeah, a bit last year. And um, I think a couple of sacks last year in that game. Um, NFL guy. I don't know who he's with right now, but um, I know he's in the NFL. Uh, so he was a legit player and, and got after them. He was yeah. probably one of the best edge rushers that they saw last year. Uh Colorado State does not have anybody like that, but um, they got some dangerous guys. You know, the quarterback, Braden Fowler Nicolosi, is a good young quarterback yes. and you know, threw for a ton of yards against the Buffs last year. Torrey Horton is a NFL receiver who uh, you know, we'll see how healthy he is. Uh, he got banged up last week. They said he's going to give it a go, but um, that's a uh, I think it's a groin strain or something like that. So um, we'll see how effective he is. Uh, but if he's not in the game, then that's going to be tough for CSU. Uh, they yeah. need him in the game because he had a he had a monster game against the Buffs last year. Yeah, I think it will be tough, uh, and it's going to be tough for him to try to deal with that soft tissue injury yeah. as if mm -hmm. it's a groin or or anything of that nature, quad, calf, anything like yeah. that is going to be tough to bounce back from or come back too early and possibly re-injure it. So, um, you know, if he's out, then you know, like you said, it might be tough on them. Nicolosi is a good quarterback. Um, Let's talk about we got injuries on our side also. You know, uh, hopefully Horton is healthy throughout the rest of the season, but this game he decides to not play and just watch from the sideline <laughs> because of that soft tissue injury. But we have some injuries to deal with. Uh, Coach Prime gave an update. We also gave an update last night or Sunday night with myself and Uncle Neely. But Dalen Hayden expected to miss this ball game with the uh, yeah. lower leg injury. He was seen in a boot. Didn't participate uh, in practice. But let's say he's out, right, or he's questionable. He's out for the game. Um, so I would go to look for Isaiah Augusto uh, to really get some some carries, uh, maybe Charlie step up and get more. Or we might even see uh, one of the two dynamic freshmen that we have in Brandon Hood and Michael Welch. What do you see yeah. from the running back commit, committee before we move on to the other positions? Well, first things first, I'll say, I'm not sure it matters much if they actually commit to the run. I think that they that's first and foremost is they've got to show that they're willing to run the football. And if they do, mm. I think they got capable guys, you know. And um, I know it's only two carries, but I really like what I saw out of Isaiah Augustave at the end of that game the other night. Um, the Buffs were two for five on third or fourth and one rushes the other night. Yeah. Well, the only two ones they got were Isaiah Augustave. They were third and shorts. Late, I know they were late in the game. It's garbage time. But he ran hard and gets three yards on both of them. So he did not only get the first down, he got beyond the first down. And so, um, and shocking, he's their biggest back, right? <laughs> you hand right. it to your biggest back on, on, on a short yard situation. That's smart. And he ends up falling forward. <laughs> he ends up falling forward, <laughs> and he got a first down, he moved the chain. So, yeah. Uh, 
I like what I saw out of him, and and he's a guy we we talked about it in the offseason, Chico, that um, didn't really play a whole lot of Arkansas last year, and then finally the last two games or so, two or three, he finally got a chance. He has a hundred yard game, and he rushes, and he looks really good, right? Um, so I'd like to see him more. Um, I've been a Micah Welch fan from the time he got here. Uh, right. you know, he, he hasn't gotten an opportunity yet, but Coach Prime even mentioned after NDSU that he was trying to get him in the game because he runs so hard. You need a guy that runs hard. I want to see Micah Welch, and and those are the two guys I want to see. And you love Charlie. You love the Charlie story. Uh, I've seen Charlie, you know, and yes, I think he can get you a play here and there. I want to see August Dave and Micah Welch. Those are the two guys I want to see right now. I think you echoing what a lot of the fans are saying out there wanting to see mm-hmm. and saying that maybe the, the quote unquote feel good story is over. I, I still think Charlie can uh, contribute to the ball club. It might not be as an every down back or a starter, right. but you know, there's a lot of things he can provide on this ball club, even if it's being just a spot back in passing situations, um, you know, to catch some balls out of the backfield screens and pick up the blitz and such like that. But uh, like you say, I think we do have uh, a couple of more explosive, more elusive backs back there yeah. that we need to take advantage of and uh, and let run wild. And uh, we saw the frustration or either the determination on Michael Welch's face the first couple games on the sidelines as he's looking like he, man, I'm just waiting on my turn. <laughs> I'm being patient, but I'm waiting on my turn. Uh, a couple of other guys. Real, uh, real quick, are, uh, real quick, okay. Chico, uh, you make a good point about Charlie. I, and I, I don't, I don't think that just throw him to the side and don't use him. No, um, no, no, you know, not at it, all. When you look at, and I always take pro football focus uh, rankings with a grain of salt, but like if you look at that, their highest rated pass blocker is Charlie Offerdahl. Mm. Their lowest rated pass blocker is Dallin mm. Hayden. So you understand wow. why he's in there uh, to do that. And I think there's a yeah. role, um, if you got Charlie back there, do a draw play, do something to where it looks like a pass, and then he gets his opportunity uh, to, to throw things off a little bit. So I think there's a role. I just, for those power runs and, and for those those situations where you just go between the tackles, I want yeah. Welch and August Dave. Now, you know, I could we, we could harp on this a little bit, but, you know, the run that Charlie got stopped on, I think it was fourth and two or third, fourth and two, I think. Fourth and one. And yeah. Fourth and one, they just ran yeah. the simple uh, zone play that normally they do from the shotgun. Yeah, I think that was a situation where, man, you can't you can't call that play from that uh, formation, you know, in that situation with that personnel. All everything was wrong in yeah. my opinion mm-hmm. <laughs> with that formation, personnel situation, and all. So uh, maybe they learn from that and realize what they have to do. And let's just same thing the defense does. Uh, at least their philosophy, putting people in the position to be successful and doing the things that they do best. Let's do the same thing on the offensive yes. side, dog. <laughs> Even if we have to move a tight end to to block uh, or tackle to block at tight end and maybe slide a tight end down the fullback, you know, do what we got to do. Right. Use the different formations and personnel like we saw Nebraska do. If we came out, honestly, if we came out and ran, I feel like same person personnel settings, the same mm-hmm. plays that Nebraska won't, uh, uh, ran against us in some situations, I think we could be successful. Yeah. Move the pocket with Shadour. Uh, uh, quick game is on point. Mm-hmm. That's I think, should be our MO for the rest of the season. And then uh, those deep plays will come, and the run will open up the pass. And, you know, if I agree with you. And I, I would love to see some old-school – I formation on a third and one. Why not? You if know? we have the personnel, but, let's do yes. it. Yes. Put, I mean, S- Savelle Smalls is a big guy. Okay. I rode an elevator with him last week. He's a big dude. You know, yeah. uh, seeing him up close is like, okay, wow, he's huge. Um, put him, line him up as a fullback on third and one. That's an uh, H back all day, though. Yes. Get Shadur under center, turn around, let Savelle Smalls bust through a hole, and then Charlie, whoever, uh, you know, get that yard and then move something hands. real quick. Real quick to go back on my playing days, and Savelle kind of reminds me of myself a little bit. And yeah. like you said, standing next to him, you'll realize he's he's actually bigger than me. So the things that I was asked to do, coming in playing tight end, and then having to play some slot receiver because I was in this same spread type offense. Yeah. So there's really, as Coach Prime uh, articulated, there's really not a spot for a tweener type tight end receiver, Mikey Harrison type t- guy. But if you're a bigger type guy who's willing to block 
which the coaches asked me to bulk up and do my last two years, then you you can slide down in that fullback spot and become a lead blocker. You can go on the line, end of the line, and be a hand in the dirt tight end. And yeah. if he's athletic enough, he could line up in the slot and run up. But coach is not asking him to do that. So yeah. line up in that backfield and lead block on somebody like we saw Bishop Thomas do last year. Right. But that's all coaches and personnel and using the guys uh, in the best way possible. That's what I see that we can do for some power football to get those short yardage and to impose our will on the defense to show them that we're here and we're going to be more physical than you and not just be a finesse team. Yeah, I agree with you. And we, we've been harping on the run game, uh, you know, myself and other colleagues, you know, all week, maybe all off season. But um, yeah. I, I just want to see a commitment to it. And, you know, I would love – they're not going to do this, but I would love if the first quarter <laughs> is all of them trying to establish the run. And just giving the ball to running backs and trying to establish why it. Why not? And not, I mean, you, you put it in Shadur's hands all all last game, and you got nothing out of it. And so it doesn't hurt anything, to, in my opinion. Just just try to get it going, get the run game going, show them you're willing to do it, so that it works in the yeah. third and fourth quarter. And I think it really will open up the ball game for Shadur. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think instead of putting so much on Shadur's hands and plate and on his back kind of you know if you establish the run now you can put him a great quarterback in a position to continue to move the chains not turn the ball over not have to be so aggressive and make so mm-hmm. many everything is not on him shout out to matt mcchesney i think he said uh if shadur doesn't have to do everything he can do anything yeah and that's so real he need to Coin that quote. I think Mark <laughs> Jones at ESPN, <laughs> I think he used it. So I'm using it now too because it's so true, you know, yeah. and that's basically what I'm saying. You have to take some of that pressure off of Shadur Sanders, and it will help if the offensive line can establish themselves against uh, another team that's not better than you on paper. So let's go out there and establish this, get that confidence yeah. up. So when we do play whoever else, we'll realize that at least we know we can do this. So let's do it. You yeah, know? I, running I, game has to be established. I asked Coach Prime a little bit about this the other day, and um, I just believe it, all offensive linemen I've ever talked to tell me that they would much rather run block than pass block. They enjoy that more. Okay, I've had only and, one tell me the opposite. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, and he Coach Prime kind of pushed back. He goes, "Well, have you asked our guys?" I'm like, "Well, no," but I, and I, I then said, <laughs> "But would you agree that your offensive line could be more aggressive run blocking?" He goes, "Yes." And so yeah. to my point, I think – I don't think this offensive line is as bad as maybe it's looking. I would like to see them be able to come out. I think you you, you want to establish a run in some ways to help your O-linemen. Get them comfortable. Let them be aggressive from the start. He's been right. calling them dogs all off season. I feel like they're dogs where you're kind of pulling back on the leash a little bit right now. Uh, take the leash off. Let the dogs go and be aggressive <laughs> right from the start. And I would love to see what this line looks like when – they can impose their will from the start and they know they can fire out and be aggressive because uh, it, it opens so many things. I mean, just think of how many, you know, play, I mean, action. play action, all yeah. the different things you yes. can do if you can run the football that you can't do right now because nobody has to respect a play action with Colorado. Right. And it's all about that defensive line, not knowing yep. what's coming next, whether it's yep. going to be a draw screen, uh, a jet sweep, outside mm-hmm. run, inside run, hitting you in the, hitting you in the mouth finessing you zone play whatever there's a lot of different things you can do to mix it up you know to keep that defensive line on their heels 